Does Jesus wants us to be poor? The story of the rich man and the eye of the needle. I recently posted a video with the title, The Matthew Effect, Why the Rich Get Richer and the Poor Get Poorer. It's a great video. Go check it out. You will learn a lot about getting wealthy the right way, the Christian way. In any case, I was amazed at some of the comments. There were a lot of people who thought that wealth is anathema to Christianity. They basically say, it is wrong to be rich. I was astounded at this mindset. So, I decided to look more into the matter. Does Jesus want us to be poor as Christians? This is an important question because how you answer this question will have a serious impact on how you live your life here on earth and how you approach your salvation. Before we get deeper into the topic, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and like this video. The issue of wealth and faith has been a source of controversy in the church for a very long time. On the one camp are those who believe that being a Christian is a guarantee of abundance in health, wealth, and ungarnished prosperity. In this camp belong to such pastors as Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Joyce Meyer, and Benny Hill. Then we have those way over on the other camp. These Christians believe that being rich is anathema to Christianity. These Christians emphasize ascetic values, focusing on practices like simplicity, self-denial, and abstaining from worldly pleasures. They often rely on Matthew 19 verse 24, where Jesus says to the disciples, Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19 verse 24. They interpret this to mean that it is impossible for any rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Is that what Jesus really meant? Does Jesus really want us to be poor in order to inherit the kingdom of God? Let's start with what it means to be a so-called rich man or to be a rich person. For some, to be rich means access to abundance of valuable financial assets or physical possessions. For others, me included, it simply means to have more than you need for subsistence. So, you can see that the definition and perception of wealth is relative. With that in mind, what does Jesus mean by Matthew 19 verse 24? Does he mean that once you have more than you need, you cannot enter the kingdom of God? Or does he mean that access to abundance of valuable financial assets or physical possessions is a sure way to hell? There are two interpretations to this. The first is that Jesus was not speaking literarily. He was speaking metaphorically. So he could not have meant that any rich person is doomed to hell just for being rich. I will come back to this in a minute because there is more to this for it to make sense. The second interpretation makes more sense to me. Jesus was referring to people who have become so wealthy that they cannot divorce their heart from their money and possessions. He was referring to undue attachment to money and wealth. Indeed, money and material possession become the God of such individuals. Jesus referred to this in two other places in the Bible. In Matthew 6 verses 24 to 26, he says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. It is indeed difficult to free oneself from the distraction of excessive wealth. But it is not impossible. Jesus himself said so in verse 26, when he says, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I believe he means given the enormous power and pull of wealth, it is difficult for a rich man to strictly follow the path of salvation, but with God it is not impossible. It is difficult, but not impossible. The key question to ask when you go after wealth is, what is more important to you, the kingdom of God or wealth? Because if you sincerely seek first and foremost the kingdom of God, I do not see why you should be deprived of God's material blessing. The question is, can you be like Job and keep your focus on God in spite of your wealth? Or can you, as Jesus says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. 
Matthew 6, 20 to 21. So, wealth is not the problem. It is your perception and attachment to wealth that is the problem. Now back to that first interpretation of Matthew 19, verse 24, where Jesus says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, verse 24. Some Bible scholars believe Jesus meant this metaphorically. According to these scholars, the eye of a needle was actually the name of a small gate in the city wall of Jerusalem through which pedestrians could pass. But it was too small for camels loaded with goods escorted by their rich owners to go through. So the rich men and merchants entering the city with their camels loaded with goods could not use the eye of the needle gate. They either have to offload their goods, which is symbolic for riches, or go through the large main gate. This should remind us of another verse. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Matthew 7 verses 13 to 14. In any case, according to this theory, it is the inability of the rich man and his camel of goods to go through the gate called the eye of the needle that makes Jesus to warn that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. It sounds logical. Yet it would have made sense if archaeologists have been able to find evidence that such a gate existed. It does not mean it did not exist. It just means we do not know for sure. Where does that leave us? Does it mean that Jesus wants us to be poor? I do not believe so. First of all, Jesus cares so much for the poor. In fact, he insists that we help the poor. How can we help the poor if we are stuck in poverty? The disciples were surprised with Jesus' statement about rich men not being able to enter the kingdom of God. That is because their culture thought of rich people as favored by God and are able to accomplish anything. They thought, if you are rich, you must be doing all the right things according to the law of God. This was the mentality that Jesus aimed to correct. When Jesus says the rich can't attain heaven, it would have left them wondering how anyone could hope to attain salvation, if even the rich people cannot, with all their wealth. That is why Jesus elaborated by acknowledging that in human terms, no one can achieve salvation by their own strength or wealth. And that includes the rich, the poor, the middle class, the religious, and the sinners. It is impossible for human beings to secure eternal salvation through good deeds alone. While I do not believe in the popular doctrine of Christ for wealth that some churches preach, I also do not believe that poverty is the recipe for salvation. Don't forget that wealth means more than just money. It includes health, influence, talent, good looks, knowledge, confidence, and so much more. I believe by virtue of being the children of God, we are entitled to our Father's inheritance, which is the entirety of the universe. But first, we must seek His kingdom, which is our ultimate inheritance. No, Jesus does not want us to be poor, and wealth is not a curse. But the excessive focus on wealth could be a detriment for your salvation. As you watch this, I pray that God bless you with wisdom and wealth that is anchored on the values and principles of Jesus Christ. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 Thank you for watching. God bless you abundantly. Amen.